Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. You probably clicked on this video because you guys want to see an update on my kayak over here. Well, I'm about to give you that video. Let's go. So let's go ahead and start from the back to the front. Shout out to Guggenbaits, Angler Tungsten, Red Gills. Shout out to them. That's pretty much all the stuff I use. So, starting with the back, we're gonna start with this tackle bag. This is actually a cooler tackle bag. Right now, nothing in it. That spot right there I use for food and drink, and usually some tackle maybe. Side pockets, couple of tackle. This part has my pliers, fish grippers, some tan. I got this as well, zip tied onto it, and it's a three piece rod holder. Holds three rods. This one over here holds two rods, zip tied as well. Now we'll go to the GoPro holder right here. This is actually a PVC pipe mounted on a feel free track system. You gotta buy the adapter, I think it's like five bucks. The GoPro is powered by a little battery pack here. You can get these at Walmart or any place. This is a 9,000 amp hour battery so it should charge like seven or eight GoPro batteries which if you keep it plugged in it'll last all day. I could also connect it to this box because it has a cigarette lighter aux and a USB on the other side right here. That's why I like this box. Everything I show you in this video I'm going to try to put a link in the description so you guys can check it out but that's how it's set up. There's my GoPro pointing to my kayak. Thought I'd give you guys a new view instead of the chesty two rod holders extra which i don't really use now this is the battery it's a 75 amp hour duracell battery deep cycle the box that it's in is a newport battery box i can link it down below as well it's pretty awesome give you a test button so you can see the uh, battery voltage left on it this part is connected right here as well it actually leads to the front hatch via right there this is a yak attack forget what that's called but i'll link it down below and that runs all the way to the front hatch where all the power is supplied whenever i put the battery box in i just connect these two things right here to distribute the power the seat got it a little lifted right now i got some tackle underneath it keep my Guggen money bag down there and a tackle box soft plastics and a few hard baits that's pretty much all i use now on the other side over here we got our little stern light which the power is connected as well and it leads to the front hatch i'll show you in just a minute how everything is distributed Got the kayak paddle leading over here to the side. We got our transducer mount for our Lorenz TI 27. That's brand new. Pick that up. And here's the three in one transducer. Let me show you how that works. You can get this on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Twist this. It has a mounting bracket as well. So this just pulls up like that. And you swing the arm down. Now you just pretty much tighten everything so it doesn't fall off. And there you have it. There's my transducer mount. Don't mind my dogs over there. They're chasing each other, barking. This is a Yak Attack cup holder as well. Most of the time I put a drink in there or I put my tore up soft plastics in there. And I can scoot that up and down either way. And on the side over here, we have our whole anchor trolley system, custom. Pretty much tie cord right here with a little pulley system. The back has the exact same thing. There's one trolley system. Also have one from there to the front. On the side right here, I like to keep my fish gripper easy access. And it's actually tied to the cord here. So that if I want to take a picture, I can lip the fish. Toss it back in the water, get my camera set up right there where I put my phone so I can take me a little selfie that comes in handy just to keep the fish alive more keep it kicking breathing so there's that now let's move to the trolling motor this right here as you know I had the Sevalor trolling motor a little small 18 pound thrust upgraded to a 30 pound thrust Minn Kota. This is the only one I found fit in the hole right here. So there is that. The Lowrance TI is mounted with a ram mount and wires go to another Yak Attack 
ah, forgot what that's called. Control motor goes through this plug there. Let's open up the front hatch. I got a little seat cushion you can get at Walmart. These are pretty comfy. It just makes you set a little higher on the seat and it's a little more comfortable. Got a dry storage bag with my rain gear. Under here, we have the terminal that distributes all the negative and positive wires. Battery goes there and then it distributes to everything else that powers the kayak. This right here is an extra mount for a Lowrance. Just in case I do tournaments and I'm not allowed to use the trolling motor, I mount the Lowrance onto here. So let's go ahead and show you the trolling motor more in depth about it. I'm gonna show you the bottom and how we go lift it up and out of the water. If you guys can find a bigger trolling motor that has a higher thrust than this, let me know. Let me know what fits and I'm gonna absolutely upgrade. So, it has five speeds. One, two, three, four, five. I recommend a 75 amp hour battery or higher if you want to use speed five. It goes three miles per hour at five, I believe. And if you put it on four, it's at about two and a half miles per hour. Three is at two miles per hour. Two, la la da, all the way down. One is at a really good slow mm, half to a mile miles per hour really does good on one spot locking on a river that's what I like because if you're going upstream fishing upstream and you put it on one you're pretty much spot lock on that spot it's really nice love this thing it's a two propeller I don't think you can go with the three although I haven't tried it I'm pretty sure it won't fit I leave about an inch from the kayak itself right here it's about an inch and a half, just a clearance. As you can see from this hole where my Sevalor was lined up, that's gonna stay there. I don't honestly care if water gets in here. It doesn't affect the uh, kayak or fill it up or anything. I mean, as far as we know, the water goes up to here and there. So that's pretty much it. Make sure to check out my other video on how to install a trolling motor on a feel-free kayak. It's basically the same step, but if this is the first time you're actually doing it, this is a lot easier. Just getting the wires connected is a little harder than putting the trolling motor actually in the sonar pod. So what you do here is line up the uh, width, or the length I should say, of this and try to line it up with the bottom of your sonar pod. That's where you're going to cut the hole. Make sure it's turned the right way first before you do that. So this is the latch on the front side. You want your propeller on that side. Just line it up. Drill your one and a quarter inch. It's either one and a quarter or one and an eighth. I'll link it down below and I'll let you guys know. So then as soon as you do that, drill the top part as well. Line it up really nice you'll have a good fit for the top part take the bolts out make sure the wires are put back the same way whenever you take it apart and also make sure you flip the head of it the other way because when it comes stock it'll be flipped this way with the trolling motor like this that's because it's supposed to be mounted on like the back of a motorboat or the back of a john boat so we want to flip it around so it's done correctly for a kayak it is pretty simple this is the easiest part of it now for this plug you can get it at any place I got this at the Academy I'll try to link it down below as well you can connect that red goes with red black goes with black pretty simple it doesn't take a genius but here as well I had to put this on here so that it doesn't slide up and down that way I know how much clearance I need for the bottom of the kayak the top one has one too which comes stock with the Minn Kota so you can use that piece as well. So to put in the trolling motor, once you get to the boat ramp and launch a little bit, we just slide it right down in there. Make sure the fins are pointing up and down. Slide it in, connect the back part, and then latch up the front. I'm gonna show you how tight this is. Look at this. Now that is tight but it fits just like that I did not shorten the shaft like I did with the Sevador I find it so much easier with it 
long like that so that way when I'm actually standing in the kayak I can control it as well standing up. I would definitely recommend you not cut the shaft down. Keeping it long is the way to go. Alright guys, hope you enjoy a brief update of the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Smash that like button if this video helped you out in any way. Go ahead and leave questions and comments down below if you have any. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Keep fishing. Boom.